have you ever noticed that the answers to One Piece mysteries is usually right in front of our face? Us as readers, we sometimes find ourselves performing Olympic level mental gymnastics to solve these amazing puzzles Oda put into place. But what if I told you that the One Piece treasure is foreshadowed in Skypiea, Luffy's fight with Kaido, chapter 1053, or in literally every single chapter of the story? Just like Luffy, readers all across the world have been searching for and trying to uncover the mystery that is the One Piece for the past 25 years. But it's not a bowl of sake, it's not Luffy, it's not money, it's not a map, it's not destroying the red line, it's none of that. It's something way more invigorating that goes hand in hand with being a free man. And with the power of concrete evidence, today you will have a renewed idea on what the One Piece treasure actually is. And the moment you hear what it's called, you will immediately have a million of your own evidences rushing to your brain. And disclaimer, I'm not claiming to be the first person on planet Earth to make this theory. I highly, highly, highly doubt I'm the first one to discover this. But I wanted to make my own video to give my own personalized take on what the One Piece is. And a lot of you guys think you're subscribed to my channel, but you're not. Scroll down, hit the like and subscribe button. It all starts back in episode one, the very first episode of One Piece, but more specifically, the very first moment of One Piece. The One Piece logo pops up on the screen and we hear the classic boom sound effect. We take this for granted, but every single time a character appears or a revelation is made, the boom sound effect is played. Now there's actually a secret origin to this boom sound effect that many people don't know about. Back in 2015, there was an interview featuring Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece. There was a lot of questions asked and answered, but there's one question in particular that we need to talk about immediately because you are going to be mind blown. The interviewer from Shonen Jump asked if Oda could explain what inspired the boom sound effect that he uses almost every single chapter. And this is an important question because this is the untold story behind the creation of the infamous boom sound effect. Oda says, I just draw a sound effect that I believe would be in the particular scene. And for some reason when Oda said this, he decided to laugh, which I think is extremely suspicious and you're about to see why. Oda then goes on to say the idea of the boom sound effect might have had its inception from the taiko drum sounds you hear in Jidegeki's deciding scenes. Now it's important to pay attention to the fact that this sound effect we constantly hear was inspired by taiko drums specifically. Now that we understand Understand that? Isn't it funny how of all things that could happen in episode one, we see Luffy floating through the ocean in a drum barrel? Every single episode we see a to be continued screen, but this could have easily been the first the end type of screen. But the fact that the One Piece treasure could have been foreshadowed all the way back in episode one is absolutely mind blowing. And honestly, it's something Oda would do. That's such an Oda type of thing to do. Anyways, the amount of emphasis on drums in the story is beyond normal. Like Oda's clearly trying to set something up. We have Drum Island where a Straw Hat member is recruited. We learn about the Blackbeard Pirates, the Will of D, Zone Fruit users, like all sorts of important information was dropped in this arc. Drum Island. Then in Skypea, we have a god named NL that literally wears taiko drums. Like, look at them side by side, they are completely identical. And you can take this a step further because the way they're positioned, you can infer that there's a fifth drum located where his heart is, just like Luffy's drums of liberation being played from his own heart. Oda has been toying with us and he's been hinting what the One Piece is this whole time. Then when Luffy defeats NL, he bangs on a bell that could be heard from very far away, almost like if he was banging on a drum. If you do some research on taiko drums, it turns out that when they're hit hard with a baki, taiko can produce sounds topping 130 decibels, meaning that they're as loud as a jet airplane. A fucking drum can do that? You might think that this is a random fact now, and yeah, I can see why you would believe that. But I promise you this is going to make perfect sense later on in the theory, and you are going to be mind blown beyond belief. Next, we have to actually talk about a different anime called Naruto. Now I know what you're thinking. You can't compare One Piece and Naruto. They're not the same thing. Yeah, Einstein, obviously, but check me out. The author of Naruto, aka Kishimoto, was like best friends with the author of One Piece, aka Oda. They've mentioned each other in many interviews and in the last page of the last chapter of Naruto, Kishimoto drew the straw hat Jolly Roger on the faces of the Hokage. Then in response, Oda drew what seems to be Luffy and Nami visiting Naruto in a ramen shop. Okay, but what does this have to do with the theory? The deuteragonist of Naruto, aka the secondary protagonist, is a character named Sasuke. And in Naruto, Sasuke has a power-up called Susano. Now, Susano wasn't created in Naruto, it actually derives from Western Japanese mythology. So it's important to note that Oda isn't the only mangaka that takes inspiration from real-life mythology. A lot of authors do this. Now, at one point, Sasuke had the power to create black flames called Amaterasu. And in real-life mythology, Amaterasu and Susano are siblings, with Susano being the younger brother of sun goddess Amaterasu 
Yamasu. Now, what if I told you that Oda is definitely, definitely, definitely inspired by sun goddess Amaterasu? It's not only Oda's best friend Kishimoto using Amaterasu in his story, it's also Oda himself using it in One Piece. I believe to some extent, sun goddess Amaterasu inspired the legend of sun god Nika in One Piece, and I'm about to explain why. What if I told you that sun goddess Amaterasu has a direct connection to taiko drums in Japan? Legend says the word taiko literally means big drum in Japanese, and the large rumbling sound of drums has been a part of the culture and the tradition of Japan for centuries. Some say the origin of the taiko harks back to the time of the gods, with the legend of Amaterasu, the sun goddess, being the story of the creation of the taiko. What this means is sun goddess Amaterasu created the taiko drum in Japan. So therefore, it is my sincere belief that sun god Nika, aka Joy Boy, created his own treasure that was a drum. But wait, there's more. There's an insane Japanese legend that I believe heavily inspired the story of One Piece. There's three characters, Amaterasu, Susano, and Ame. Technically, their names are longer than that, but I'm gonna shorten it so that this theory isn't confusing. Also, I'm gonna take a moment to explain this story, and I promise you, you're gonna thank me once I'm done. So basically, little brother Susano used to ravage lands, and it upset his sister Amaterasu so bad that she hid in a cave and used a boulder to block the entrance. This caused the earth to go into darkness because of no sun, and devil began to freely roam the earth. This was until Ame, a small goddess with a face creased by age and laughter, made their way to other gods. Ame then poured out a huge sake barrel, jumped on its head, and began a wild dance. The music was so lively and infectious that the other gods began to dance and sing and music filled the earth completely. Eventually, sun goddess Amaterasu left her cave and brought the sunlight back to earth. Why does this apply to One Piece, you ask? Ame must be the inspiration to Joy Boy, the man who brings laughter, and sun goddess Amaterasu must be the inspiration to Nika, the man who brings the dawn. Therefore, Oda combined Amaterasu with Ame to create Nika, aka Joy Boy. And seeing how Susano basically took Amaterasu out of commission for some time, it's very well possible that Susano, the god associated with sea and storms, influenced Emu in One Piece. Now I know I'm throwing a lot of details at you really quickly, let's take a second to slow down. In recent times, it's been shown that Luffy has manifested the wills of both Joy Boy and Nika. Not only has Zunisha said that Joy Boy back when Luffy awakened his fruit, but his devil fruit is Sun God Nika specifically. This is implying that Sun God Nika and Joy Boy is one and the same. And now in isolation, it's heavily implied that Joy Boy and Nika were the same person because they both brought joy and laughter to everyone. So let me put it this way. Sun God Nika was a man nicknamed Joy Boy, and his will was inherited by a man named Luffy nicknamed Mugiwara. You can even take this further because Emu has a secret giant straw hat hidden in the depths of Arijwa. A lot of people, including myself, believe that this straw hat belonged to the one and only Joy Boy, or should we say Nika? And Emo has been catching on to how Luffy inherited the will of Joy Boy and is wearing the same type of hat that Joy Boy used to wear. If you made it this far into the video, please like, comment, subscribe. This theory and video took forever to make. Now that we understand that there was a character named Nika, Nick's name Joy Boy, and then Luffy inherited the will, let's explain why Emu correlates with Susano. A lot of people notice this, but if you take the name Emu and flip it backwards, it becomes Umi, and Umi in Japanese translates to sea or ocean. This could be metaphorical where Emu controls the ocean of the world or it could be literal where Emu physically controls the ocean and maybe even has an ocean type devil fruit. It could be a Logia type to name the Umi Umi no Mi and Emu was so creative that he nicknamed himself after the fruit but backwards. So in short, Emu Sama could correlate and control the oceans just like Susano. What also helps the case is that the descendants of the current world government were the people who destroyed the ancient kingdom. Lots of people believe that Emu's from the Void Century, but it's not confirmed. It's very well possible thanks to fruits like the Ope Ope no Mi, but again, it's not confirmed. So if Emu was the enemy of Sun Goddess Amaterasu, aka Nika, it would make sense that Susano was the inspiration for Emu. And how did Sun God Nika make his return? Through music, joy, and laughter, the inspiration of Joy Boy, Ame. Let's do a quick recap before I add tons more evidence to this theory. Sun Goddess Amaterasu inspired Sun God Nika. Sun Goddess Amaterasu's little brother Susano inspired Emu Sama. Ame no Uzume no Mikoto, the goddess of the dawn, inspired Joy Boy. Just like the legends, Emu caused Sun God Nika to go into hiding, and Nika will return due to the drum sounds made by Joy Boy. During the fight of Luffy versus Kaido, Nika made its return due to the drums of liberation made by Joy Boy's heart. But these drums were not heard and recognized by everyone 
everyone. If we follow the legend, I'm is supposed to bang a drum that the whole world parties and dances to. We know that Roger found the One Piece being Joy Boy's treasure, but he clearly didn't use this worldwide drum. I believe this drum made for Joy Boy is specifically only to be used by Joy Boy and have a good reason why. Roger said he was too early and he wishes he was in the same era as Joy Boy and I believe he's referring to Luffy. What supports this is that during Marineford, Mihawk says that Luffy has the most terrifying power in the world. This power is to befriend and recruit people, but I also think that this power could be used in tandem with the One Piece. When Whitebeard told Blackbeard he's not the man Roger's waiting for, Whitebeard knows Luffy's terrifying power and knows Luffy's the one destined to find and use the One Piece. So Luffy's terrifying power could be why it's him that must use the One Piece and not others like Blackbeard or even Roger. This is supported by the fact that in Skypiea, we see symbols of a monkey wearing a straw hat, which would also explain why Roger couldn't or wouldn't play the One Piece drum. On a separate note, we learned from Whitebeard during Marine Ford War that discovering the One Piece will turn the world upside down. If the One Piece is a drum, I have loads of ideas why this would turn the world upside down. First of all, when the legend of Ahmed played the drum, the whole world began to party and dance. Is it possible that Luffy creates the biggest party in the world by banging on the taiko drum known as the One Piece? That might be reaching, but it makes a lot of sense when you think back to how a taiko drum in real life is as loud as a jet airplane. And a lot of people think that Luffy's dream above Pirate King is creating the world's biggest party. And to which I don't disagree, I think that's a great idea. But then we have to consider what would trigger this party. Following Ame's legend, Luffy can bang and play the One Piece drum so loudly that the whole planet hears it and begins dancing. That's option one, let's talk about option two. We all know that everyone's going to clash and there's going to be a huge final war, but again we need to consider what will trigger that. The taiko drum was often used to signal soldiers on the battlefield. My idea is Luffy making worldwide news like how he did with 3D2Y, but this time the final war commences with the sound of a drum going across the planet. Oda admitted that the boom sound effect is inspired by taiko drums, so why wouldn't the final war start with the sound of a taiko drum? Especially when you consider how in Skypea, Wiper says that the sounds of drums announce a battle. That's a direct reference to taiko drums in real life that Oda is inspired by. This would also play into how Whitebeard said that the One Piece world would flip upside down upon the discovery of the One Piece. Would triggering a huge world war flip the world upside down? Yeah, I think so. And now this third option for what the One Piece drum could be used for is a bit tinfoil, so be prepared. What if this taiko drum, aka the One Piece, was so loud it shattered the red line? I highly doubt a punch from Luffy would destroy the worldwide mountain, so I'm more in favor of a drum. A lot of fans do think that the ancient weapons would be used to destroy the red line, which is completely fair, but we can't treat headcanon as fact. Oda could throw a complete curveball and not have the ancient weapons destroy the red line, but instead have the One Piece destroy the red line. Again, this option is super tinfoil. I'm not going to die on the hill for that. Honestly, I believe that the One Piece drum will trigger the final war. Now, there's actually one more bonus option that the One Piece drum could do, and I definitely want to share this even if it might not happen. Back in Dressrosa, we had a child named Sugar turning everyone into toys and having them wiped from memories of everyone who knew them. I believe in many, many ways, both Dressrosa and the Ark are foreshadowing what happens in the Ancient Kingdom. I want to connect them by saying that everyone's memory of the Void Century was wiped, just like how Sugar was wiping people from the memory of Dressrosa citizens. And this is still going on because the world government banned reading Poneglyphs. Now what if Luffy playing this drum that, again, is limited to Joy Boy, brings back everyone's memory of the Void Century? Not only would this turn the world upside down or piss off the Godosei or parallel Dressrosa, this would also trigger the final war that is bound to happen. According to Whitebeard, someone will carry the history of the world on their back and they will turn the world upside down. Luffy's heartbeat, the drums of liberation cannot be heard worldwide, but I believe the real drums of liberation, the One Piece, will be heard worldwide. Especially when you consider the voice of all things. Luffy could use the voice of all things while he plays the One Piece drum. This would make the voice of all things a lot more significant and have a vital role in the treasure Joy Boy left behind. So to recap, Amaterasu Amaterasu was an upset person who went hiding into a cave because of Susano. Ame dumped out a sake barrel and played the taiko drum which freed sun goddess Amaterasu. This brought the dawn back into the world and created one big party. Like I am very 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 certain that this is what heavily inspired the story of One Piece. So now let me ask you, look deep down within yourself and ask yourself, is the One Piece treasure actually a taiko drum?